channel. For those of you who don't know me or if you've never been here before, welcome. My name's Rachel. I'm the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Happy Tuesday. I hope you had a great weekend and I hope your week has gotten off to a good start for you. You know, we're looking down uh, the week at Easter already. I can't believe we're already into April. Um, I don't know about you, but around here in places, we actually got snow over the last couple days, which is very frustrating for a lot of people. And uh, for me, my weekend was kind of busy. We did go out on a junk run on Sunday. Didn't amount to a whole heck of a lot, unfortunately. The thrift stores still seem to be a bit bare in places, especially like the metal and wood aisles. And uh, then the prices of some of the stuff was just so astronomical that there was no way I could afford to pay what they were asking because I wouldn't have been able to make my money back on anything. So it's kind of a small junk run, but I do have one for you for Friday, nevertheless. And then yesterday I did get to spend some time out in my greenhouse, which was nice. And this week I am looking forward to actually starting on my hutch uh, that has been here in my cottage, taking up space for far too long now. And it's about darn time that I actually get to something done with it. So I think that will probably be a big portion of my video for Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. And for today, I have a thrift flip for you. Um, I finished six projects uh, using all DIY paint and some redesigned by Prima transfers and uh, decoupage paper. And remember, you can get any of the DIY products you see in today's video in my store here at the cottage or online in my web shop at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you have a favorite item, I would love to hear what that is at the end. And if you aren't already, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then hit the little notification bell. That way you don't miss anything from here. Anyway, without further ado, here are the projects I completed for this week's video. For project one, I've had these two candle holders sitting around for quite a while, kind of undecided what I wanted to do with them. At one point, I took them apart and spray painted the metal pieces ivory, decided I didn't like it, set them aside to try and come up with a new plan. And finally, for today's project, I decided to throw them in. I started by painting them with Rust-Oleum's 2X in dark brown and then went in with Apothecary by DIY and gave each of them two good even coats of Apothecary, letting them dry thoroughly in between each coat. Once I was done with the painting, it was on to distressing. So here I am with my damp shop towel, giving each of these candle holders just a random wet distressing to bring back some of that beautiful detail in these candlesticks. Once that was done and the paint was dry again, it was time to seal it. As I've said before, DIY paint is porous and clay based and can be reactivated with water. So it is always best to seal it. Here I'm using DIY's white wax. I am waxing it on with a wax brush and then wiping back the excess with a shop towel. It's a pretty easy process and a great way to finish your pieces. Gives them a nice matte finish, which I love. And once that was done, these pieces were ready to go out on the floor. Project two is a very simple makeover. I had bought this little urn a while ago, debated on whether or not I was going to paint it, but finally decided I wanted to go ahead and paint it a dark gray. So I pulled out my DIY paint called Old School and gave this two good even coats of paint. And I like pouncing the paint on. It takes away any brush stroke issues and just gives it a nice little bit of texture. 
Once that was done and the paint was dry, I went back in with my DIY white wax, worked it into all the nooks and crannies, wiped back any excess, went over a couple areas two or three times just to make sure that the wax was in there where I wanted it. And once that was done, this piece was finished. Project three, I had bought this bowl and pillar holder together on one of my thrift hauls a while ago. I knew when I bought them, I wanted to marry them up together. So here I am giving them each a good bath with some crud cutter followed by some clean water. And once they were completely dry, I went in with my E6000 glue, put a bead of glue around the top of the pillar holder, flipped my bowl over and centered that pillar holder in the middle of the bowl. I did set something heavy on it and set it aside for several hours to dry before I moved on to the next step. Once I was sure that the pillar holder was attached really well to the bowl, I went ahead and went in with my paint. Now, the paper I'm going to be using in the bottom of this bowl had a really pretty light sage green, which DIY does not carry that particular color. So I mixed it myself using DIY's crinoline aviary with a dash of weathered wood to get this color. So I gave the outside of the bowl two good even coats of my new color and the bottom inside of the bowl two good even coats of white swan because I knew that's where I was going to be putting the decoupage paper. Once that was done and the paint was dry, I did go in with some 220 grit sandpaper just to make sure everything was nice and smooth and there weren't any chunks of paint anywhere and then I went back in with my damp shop towel cleaned it all up and did a little bit of wet distressing once that was done it was time to move on to putting the decoupage paper into the inside of the bowl so what I did is I laid it on top of the bowl and I used my thumb to just go around and press down on the paper which left a pretty decent imprint exactly where I wanted to cut it and then I was able to take it up and just use that crease to cut out the circle that I needed once I had my circle cut out, I laid it down in the bottom of the bowl just to make sure it would work. And then as kind of a spur of the moment decision, I measured and cut out a piece of the paper to go around the base of the pillar holder. Once that was done, I set, set my pieces aside and began the decoupaging process by putting a partial coat of liquid patina on the bottom of the bowl and then laying my paper down in. I had to turn my paper a couple times because this bowl wasn't exactly perfectly round and I had to figure out where the paper needed to lie. Once I did that, I just laid the liquid patina down in an even coat followed by the paper across the bottom and once I was satisfied there weren't any wrinkles, I followed it up with a coat of liquid patina on top. Then it was on to the pillar holder, same process, just put some liquid patina down, put the paper down, and then slowly worked with the liquid patina and the paper around the pillar holder until it was completely covered. Gave it one good even coat of liquid patina once it was down, and then this piece was finished. Now I have to say project four wasn't even really supposed to be a project this go around, but I had just enough of the paint that I had mixed left over and I didn't want to waste it. So I grabbed this out of my stash and gave the base of it two good even coats with my custom color and then went over the top and around the little um, hole and the, the perch with DIY's weathered wood. So I gave it two good even coats of my custom color on the base 
and two good even coats of weathered wood elsewhere. Then I sealed the entire piece with DIY's big top and decided I was going to use some transfers on this. I have been trying to use up some of my open transfer sets that I have laying around and I thought parts of this set called Garden Marvels would be perfect for this piece. I started with this branch and I kind of dry fitted it with the backing on it first just to see where I wanted it before I peeled the back off and adhered it to the piece with my fingers. Once it was down and pretty well attached, I went back in with my transfer stick and began to rub, peeling back the little piece of vellum as I went until it was completely adhered. Once the branch was down, I went back in with a little bird from the same transfer set, put that on one of the branches and attached him to the piece as well. Once the bird was down, I decided I had a bunch of single leaves in this set and I thought they would look really cute on the branch. So I took them one by one and attached them to the branch as well. And when that was done, there was still a little space in the back that was kind of open. So I took this little flower, attached that to the back, rubbed it on with a transfer stick, and then I was happy with how this piece looked. Once all the transfers were down, I gave the, them one good coat of big top to seal and this piece was done. Project five, I decided I wanted to finish this cheese box I've had laying around for a bit. So I started by filling the cracks and around the side of it because I was wanted to put some decoupage paper on the top. So I'm using just some wood putty to fill everything in. And once the wood putty is nice and dry, I went back in with some 220 grit sandpaper and just sanded everything smooth. Once that process was complete, it was time to paint. And I had decided to use DIY's Farm Fresh and that I only wanted to paint the top and the bottom rims of this piece. So here I am starting with the top and then I taped off the bottom to leave the side natural and painted just that bottom rim with the Farm Fresh as well. Uh, luckily, since this piece was very neutral in color, it only took me one coat of paint for this. Once that was done, I painted the top with one good even coat of white swan, and then it was onto the decoupage paper. For the paper, I'm using Neutral Florals by Redesign by Prima, and I'm attaching it with Liquid Patina by DIY. So I just start at the top, I put a good even coat of Liquid Patina down, place my paper where I want it, push it down with my hands, and then continue on down the piece, putting Liquid Patina down, followed by the paper. I rub it in really well with my hands to make sure that there's no wrinkles, and then I do follow that up with one good even coat of Liquid Patina all over the the paper on top. Once the liquid patina is completely dry, I go in with some 120 grit sandpaper and with a downward kind of sweeping motion, I gently remove the excess decoupage paper from around the piece. It's a pretty easy process and the best way to remove your excess decoupage paper. Once that is done, it's time to seal my piece. And I decided to go ahead and seal the entire piece with a, with a coat of DIY's Big Top just to protect the sides and the top as well. So here I am just doing that rim and around the sides and then this piece is done. For my sixth and final project, I decided to finally tackle this spice rack I've had sitting around for at least a year now. 
And I had really no plan for it, no idea what I was going to do with it until I got the transfer set called Malotte's Pages by IOD. Then I finally had a plan. The first step was getting giving it a bath because it was filthy from sitting around for so long. So I used my crud cutter followed by some clean water and got it all clean and dry. Once it was completely dry, I began painting. Here I am using DIY's crinoline, which has become one of my new favorite colors. And I am meticulously painting this thing inside, outside, and the back. This took quite a while because I would have to paint a part and then let it sit and dry so that I could move on to the next piece. And I did go over it with two good even coats of paint. So it was a little bit of a time consuming process. I was very glad when it was done. Once the paint was finally finished and dry, I moved on to sanding it basically to get it nice and smooth and to give it a little bit of distressing. This thing has some really cute character and I really wanted to bring that out along with that beautiful dark brown color underneath this ivory colored paint. I'm just using some 220 grit sandpaper going over the entire piece, smoothing everything out and again just giving it a little bit of distressing as I go. Once I'm done with that, it's time to clean up around where the piece of paper was on the door. Now I knew I wanted to keep that. It's kind of cool. It has a list of all the different herbs and things you can cook with them. So I cleaned up around it and then began the process of gluing it all back down to make sure it was really secure. I'm just using Mod Podge and a little bitty paintbrush brushing the Mod Podge on and then holding the paper down in place to make sure it's well adhered. Next, it's time to seal it. And for this, I am using DIY's Big Top and going in and giving it a good even coat of Big Top everywhere that there is paint. This process also took a few minutes because again, I had to paint the back and then let it dry and then paint the front and let that dry before I could move on to the next step. And the next step was the part I was really excited for. So I took out this whole entire page of Malotte's pages, which fit almost perfectly on the front of this spice cabinet. Now this is the page that has all the fruits, little cherries, nuts, that kind of thing, which I thought was perfect for something that should go in your kitchen. And so I laid that down very, very careful to make sure it was aligned properly, pushed it down with my hand just to make sure everything was placed where I needed it, and then began rubbing with my transfer stick. Now I have to tell you, when you are putting something like this down, take your time. This took me probably a good half an hour of rubbing the transfer stick and gently peeling this vellum back. Uh, little bits of it would come up. I'd have to place the vellum back down and push them into the paint. So it was definitely a lengthy process, but totally worth it. Once the transfer was down, I took my hand and burnished it, then used the vellum. Uh, and once that was done, I needed to seal it. So I'm just using one good even coat of DIY's Big Top to seal in my transfer. And this piece is finished.
think of today's video and the projects I completed for you. I can honestly tell you there were a couple of the projects that I probably would have done a couple things different on looking back, but overall I'm pretty happy with how they all turned out. Uh, my favorite is definitely the spice cabinet. I was really glad to finally have that, have a purpose and be beautiful and a functional piece that somebody can use in their kitchen or their dining room or their pantry, whatever, going forward. And I love the fact that the paper is still on the inside of the door and it kind of speaks to its age a little bit. I think that's just a great touch. So anyway, if you did like the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, kind of what I've got going on here at the cottage in my kitchen, AKA my studio, please remember to subscribe to my channel and then hit the little notification bell. And that will let you know when I upload new content. Currently, I'm trying to stick to Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesday is usually some sort of a thrift flip, a furniture flip, a DIY, trash to treasure, that kind of thing. And then Friday is normally my junk run, unless we don't go on a junk run on a Sunday, in which case I'm pretty decent at improvising. So I will find something to put there. Anyway, I hope you have a great week. I will see you back here on Friday for my thrift haul. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And I appreciate you. All right, have a good day. Bye.